Welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV and welcome to the Malt House in sunny Wakefield. Yay. We're equidistant <laughs> between Staffordshire and NE 29-ish. 16. 16. Here we are. Shout out to the Malt House as we say. We've had a lovely afternoon here. Unfortunately, our beloved Newcastle United haven't had a lovely afternoon at St James's Park. They finished their pre-season with back-to-back -back defeats. Today we've lost 1-0 to Championship Stoke City. Lee, hmm. how worried are you? Um, I was more worried about the Millsborough result. This one looks a lot more respectable because getting beat to Stoke isn't too bad. We're getting thumped 5-1 is more concerned, especially when we're seeing the goals back. But in terms of today, obviously no one can watch it. The club blocked one of our videos for the Middlesbrough game. That video was approaching AK, gaining, gaining momentum. But the club didn't communicate with her, so no surprises there. And give us the box office email. Yeah, the box office. So we, unfortunately, people who are tuning in to this last word, that's the reason why there's no highlights today in case the club be a bit picky. I think today's new, with all the transfer speculation, looks like it's got a bit of legs, so I'm more optimistic. Yeah. For, I think you should rephrase that, are you ready for West Ham? No. I think we do need them couple of bodies in, because pre-season's told us that we need goals again. We can't rely on Andy Carroll. But uh, slightly worries, but things could get better. So, Johnny, as, as we, uh, we look at the team, Darlow was in goal, Mankio was at left back again. It was a 4 2 3 1, but Isaac Hayden had to play centre back. Are we? I mean, the season hasn't even begun yet, and we've already got an injury crisis. How do you feel defensively going into this season? I feel more better if Rob, Hull, uh, Rob Holding was brought in on loan and Jamal Lewis was in at left back, because I think that does improve Newcastle. Now, look, you talk about Fernandes and Hayden, Hayden can do that job, but Hayden's best position, as we all know, is centre midfield, and we need him with Shelby for West Ham next week. Fernandes is fine if he's with of Jamal Lascelles, who was suspended for this game anyway. Keevan Clark, is he match fit? Hopefully he is, because he's barely put a foot wrong for Newcastle since he's been at the club, so I'm hoping one of them two will be fine for next week, but Fabian Lee's, shares in training. Yes, but Lee, you're saying, is, is, are, West Ham, are we ready for West Ham? Are West Ham ready for us? Because they've got a lot of things going on as yeah. well. West Ham have got a terrible start of the season. I know you're going to ask us more about Newcastle, but they've got a horrible run of fixes after they play us. So they'll be looking at this as a six point. They're going to take a bit of a gamble, really. I know that's strange to say, a six point in the first game of the season. But they've got, I think they've got six of the, last, of the top seven of last season after they play us. So, look, who knows? But... Um, Isaac Hayden should not be playing centre half in Newcastle because he's Newcastle's best centre midfielder on his day. Well, centre midfield, Dan Barlaser got another go and he uh, put through Jacob Murphy with an absolute filthy pass, which you cannot see on this video. But you can see on Newcastle Fans TV Twitter page at Newcastle Fans TV, so go on there. I put that uh, on there earlier. Would you be playing Barlaser first game against West Ham? I'm a big fan of him, as Johnny will know. I've banged on about him for a few years. Um, very similar kind of player to Shelby though. Very in the mode, likes to pick the ball up and spread it. Um, no, I wouldn't. Although I do like Dan. It's make or break now. I think he will stay with the squad this season, despite obviously Matty staying on and Hendrick signing. I think Dan will be part of it. Um, if he goes out on loan, I don't want him out on loan. It doesn't make sense to no. because it's now make or break. He's 23 year old, so I had a fantastic season at Rotherham. I know they want him back, but. I think if Shelby's fit, or even if Shelby's not, Sean drops back and plays there ahead of him. Although, you've got to give the lad a chance. I think he'll be given his chance in the League Cup game. For a 23-year-old, Johnny, would you not... I mean, what was the point in giving him a new contract if you're not going to give him a go? It's just to, it's just to try and get more money out of him, I suppose. But I'm a, I am agree with Lee. I don't, I, wouldn't, I don't want him out on loan because I think... It's no point. You need to put him in with these players. I think he'd only approve as a player in general unless he's with better players around him. Shelby Hayden, Jeff Hendrick, maybe, who knows? Those sort of players he needs to be around because he, they've all got Premier League experience. Dan hasn't got that. Dan Barley then needs Premier League experience around him to guide him in these games. But I take on what Lee says, but I would throw him in in the League Cup game that we'll probably have in between the West Ham and the Brighton game. I think potentially we can get past round two I think round three is just a week later can we give him those two games just to see what he's like can we if we get past round two can we go right Dan you're going to be the pivotal part in the midfield we're going to give the likes of Isaac Hayden John Deshelvy a break 
you're going to make sure that we get through second round and third round if the, if the draw is favourable. But I'm still a little bit worried because everything that's going on, and we we could talk about all these transfers that potentially are happening, but they're not through the door yet. Jamal is not through the door yet. Callum Wilson, is he going to go to Wilson Villa? Who knows? At the minute, you'd like to think it's going to be us, but that's not been confirmed yet. Ryan Fraser's had talks that he's going to get through the door. I'm still worried for Newcastle and the rest of those boys coming through the door because it's going to be a relegation battle again. Speaking of Ryan Fraser, in arguably what will be Ryan Fraser's position, Jacob Murphy was there today with ASM and Miggy in the 10. Will that be the three that play at West Ham? The tough one because he might bring... If he plays... If Shelby doesn't fit, Sean might drop back and that might open up the space for Murphy because Almiron will play probably in the 10. But... Um, Look, it was great uh, for the last half an hour when he won the penalty and caused crew massive problems. But it's crew. I know you've got to think for crew. But the mighty Alex. But <laughs> it's crew. You know what I mean. He was blistering the, blasting away, blistering pace, everything in the championship last season. Picked up nine goals. Sheffield Wednesday want to keep him on. I think he'll be around the squad again, a bit like Barlaza. He's unproven in the Premier League for me. He's too. I've mentioned this before. Is that he's very much on Bambi. He's like Bambi. When did Bambi get on the ice? But the only thing I would say about Jacob Murphy, Lee, is that you'll see him in a disciplined right wing, well, right wing back at times, or right wing performance. That Rafa wanted him was more defensive. Yes, he says you can do your little things going forward, yeah. but he had to. His first priority was to defend. If you can let him go, right, just attack as much as you physically can. I need you to do a little bit of defensive work to help us out, but showcase what you can do going forward. Surely he's got to be given a chance to do that in the top fight and then we can really see what he's like I still even I still think he'll be around the squad obviously he's playing again against Stoke today of course we can't see how he got on because there's no obviously footage unless you go on the club's website later at Newcastle Fans TV on Twitter as well yeah. there's uh, a few clips on there we've used the footage in the past and we've always credited them with that so just look communicate with us just communicate work with us work with us we'd love you, love you to communicate with and work with us just let us know I think that's the biggest thing. If you communicate with all the fans, not just us, there's loads of channels out there. There's loads of fans out there. Just communicate with us. I'm not asking for the world. I think with Murphy, so we go back to yeah. that. Sorry. So, uh, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> with Murphy, I think we done a video which is out later on this week about squad depth. I think he's a better option than Atten for me. I don't like Atten. Yeah. Um, Aaron's is out the club. I think we need. This is his bit like Paul is after make or break again because yeah. after this is what, what he's got a year left. Yeah. Um, but I do think if Fraser comes in, he'll be first off the bench or first. He'll be prioritised over Murphy. But when he's fit, definitely. Mer- Miggy Armoron and ASM played there uh, behind the central striker Johnny. They had chances today, couldn't convert. Do you think we look on them pair a bit too favourably? Do, the, do we need to see more from them this season? You could say that, but you could also say, where's the rest of the attacking options? What are they coming up with? Um, St. Maxim and Almir are our biggest threats, and St. Maxim was our best player post lockdown. He really was. He was he was fantastic for Newcastle. And you look at that Bournemouth game in particular, Sheffield United game, he was instrumental how Newcastle were going to play going forward. Almir was a little bit different because sometimes he's hot, sometimes he's not, but he needs to play as a number 10. That's where you're going to get the best out of Miguel Almir as a number 10. I don't think he suits being on the right, I don't think he suits being on the left. I think he's there. He's okay there for one game if we've got a massive injury crisis and you have to put maybe Sean Longstaff as number 10, which I think is his favourable position. I don't think he's better defensively. I think he's better much going forward, as you saw against Bournemouth. But yes, we probably do rely on them too much, and that's why we need reinforcements in. And you look at the two players that we're trying to bring in, hopefully that can happen. So what would you do for West Ham? Would you play Miggy out wide and Sean in the 10, or would you play Miggy in the 10 and start Jacob Murphy? I think your question is, who's better in as number 10, Sean Longstaff and Miggy Almiron? And I think that's a good argument. Almiron. You'd, but you could say Sean Longstaff, when he's played in that position in the under 23s, when he's played with other yeah. teams, and even as at Newcastle at times, he looks very good as a number 10. I would still go Almiron more. I think I trust him more in that number 10. I think he can give you more as a number 10. If you're going to play on Miron anyway, you have to play him as number 10. And you have to, if you have to sacrifice Sean Longstaff to put him on the bench, I think you would do that for the time being. Because for me, Almiron will give you more long term. But if you can get Arnton Maximum and Miron as number 10, you might have to start Jacob Murphy for the odd couple of games. Or if you want to try and start Sean even from on the right hand side, it's not his favourable position. 
But if you think he could do just as good a job as Jacob Murphy, then maybe do not sacrifice him for a couple of games. But you can't have options, but they're not the best options just yet. Hopefully, if we get more players through the door, we might have better options available. Don't be too quick to discount Sean Longstaff, because Miguel Almiron was quite quiet post-lockdown, by the odd game here and there. No, I'm just saying for Sean Longstaff, is he, for me, he's better as number 10. Mm. He's much better as number 10. Defensively, or with his, when he's with somebody, as that too. I don't think he's as dominant on the ball. I don't think he's as dominant he's on the ball. He's not a Granati. No, no, he's he's if you're given that chance to link up with the striker, i.e. a Callum Wilson, touch wood, I hope that they can get some sort of relationship going on just in case Andy Ron gets I think injured. The, the problem that we're, that's not really a problem is that we've got too many certain midfielders now. Yeah. Because we've now got ball layers that looks like it's hanging around the squad. We've signed Hendrick. So there will be. Matty stayed. Matty stayed. So there might be that option that Sean does play in the 10. Maybe Almiron comes off 70 minutes. Sean moves up to 10. Well, there's another centre midfielder that comes in. in so Sean might be used a lot more in the 10. He was sensational against Bournemouth before he got injured, but it's got to be Almiron. He first. could even play Hendrick on the right hand side of the three exactly. behind the central striker as well. You could. I don't think he wants to there. No. But you can do it for the arcade. But you just fill, just filling in for that. Yeah, for okay. one nil up and we need to hang on. Okay, That's optimistic. And, yeah, we're never going to win two nil, are we? No. One nil up and we're trying to scrape a win. You take Miggy off and put Hendrick there or whatever. But yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. So up from today was Andy Carroll, who's found a bit of form league in this pre-season. A sublime goal against the mighty crew Alexandra. And then who else did he score against Barnsley? Didn't he? he did, yeah. Two great finishes, low corner. He had a chance today as well, which he just um, pulled wide as well. Would um, would he be starting for you next Saturday at West Ham? If we don't sign Wilson, I think he will. Because I don't think Joe Linton will be fit enough. He's only played... Well, how much minutes uh, did he get? I think he got about... 25, 30 minutes, Max. I don't even think it was that much. Yeah, so that's all he's got all pre-season today. So another week, aye, perhaps. But for me, I think you've got to go with Carroll if Wilson isn't signed. Um, Wilson wasn't involved never was Richie today yeah. obviously there was huge speculation that that's going to happen which was interesting because Richie only got 20 minutes the other day I think right now as we record this Saturday night it's Carroll first until yeah. things change Johnny are you sad to be losing Matt Richie potentially to, in order for us to bring in a striker like Callum Wilson it shouldn't happen but it looks like it's going to happen um, look if it does happen if, if I'm asking the question I'll ask it to you as well if Richie's leaving for Callum Wilson and Ryan Fraser, I'm taking that deal, and I'm taking that deal because I think they offer more than Matt Richie does. You sound like maybe other night. Yeah, I, I do. I think I take. I think that. I think them two combine are better than Matt Richie, and I think at the minute Newcastle do need a striker, and they need a striker desperately. I don't even think just Callum Wilson is enough in my opinion. I think they could do with another striker. And You've I got to get Mutu out the door as well. You've got to get Mutu out the door, and there's rumours with Ryan Brewster from Liverpool or Eddie and Ketia from Arsenal to get them on loan for a season. I wouldn't be against that. Because I think they could do with that Premier League move to go oh, around. Can we get goals? Last night, Nakatia. He did, yeah. So I think Newcastle could do with two strikers because I don't think Joe Linton's good enough. Um, I would have sold Joe Linton in the summer, in my personal opinion. Even if he got ten million from, I would have sold him in my in my personal opinion. But who knows? But I think Andy Carroll will start against West Ham. I think that Callum Wilson, if he was to come to Newcastle, would be a fantastic move. But I'll not forget what Max Richie's brought in Newcastle. He came and he was the best player in that season when we came, when we came up in the Championship. And he's been steady as anything. And I wish every other player had the effort that Matt Ritchie oh, had. Yeah. Because if we had a player ratings every week on just effort, Matt Ritchie would be a 9 or a 10 out of 10 every week. Every week. And he is a bit of a leader as well, so we might lose that as well. But I do think it's it's worth losing that for Wilson and Fraser, unfortunately. And I think he's been a victim. I think a victim of that because if it was any other club but Bournemouth, because he used to play for them, I don't think he would be going. I think he'd be a different player. But Jason Tindall, who's the new Bournemouth manager, who has worked with Matt Ritchie in the past, yeah. would go. I'd like to have him back. And I think Newcastle go well. He's thirty or near enough to thirty mark. Can we do a deal? And I think that's what's going to happen. To him. Yeah, I think. It just seems to be a, a necessary evil because we're not going to have the funds to go out and buy a proper striker like an Edward from Celtic or Dembele from Leon, something exactly. like that. Um, just to quickly go back on something you mentioned there, Johnny, would you have seriously taken a £30 million hit on Joe Linton to flog him? Do you think we'll get any more than £10 million from him? Not in this current market. 
I, I, I'd take the hit. It was a mistake. It was a gamble that did not pay off. Uh, okay, what, put him out on loan. Can he do well on loan in a German club or a French club or a Spanish club and get a bit of confidence, a bit of goals? And then potentially, if he's scored enough goals, take him back to Newcastle, see what he's like. And if he's any better, brilliant. If he's not, see if a club will take the hit or take the hit off what we paid for him. He's not good enough. He's not good enough. I'm sorry, we've seen a season of Joe Linton. And I'm not... I'm not taking it on today's performance of how what, how he played today. If you look at what he saw last season, he's not good enough. He's not good enough, and he's not going to two goals, two goals for a forty million pound striker. You're telling me that's enough? I'm sorry, sell him. That'd be my that's my opinion. I don't know what other people think, but if he's not unless unless he proves me wrong, and if he pro- I hope he does prove me wrong this season. If he gets goals, and say by Christmas he's got ten goals, I'll go fair play. I'll put my hands up. But are you too confident he's going to get maybe six, seven, eight goals before Christmas? I'm not, but I just think he's going to sell on value. That's why I'm keeping. Getting... But would you take ten million from right now? Oh, uh, ten million pounds from right now. In if front it gets of reinvested, if I get to keep the ten million, yeah. If it gets reinvested <laughs> in a, another striker, then yeah. But I just think he's got no sell on value. I think that's why the club are looking at. So I think he's sticking around, unfortunately. Yeah, it's it's one of them. You right in what you say. There's no there's no sell on value at the moment, is there? Um. Bruce only named five subs today, Lee. Um, on a lighter note, Henry Saive was one of them. And Henry Saive has played in every pre-season friendly. Is he staying? No, he's not. Well, he's not being registered for the 25-man squads, whenever that may be. Obviously, the transfer window shuts in a month. Uh, from finding him a club, that's effectively him out the door because he's only got one year left, a bit like Lazar, a bit like Aaron's. He's playing because there's nobody else. And he will not be selected. I can guarantee say that because he will not be picked ahead of Dan Barlazer for the 25-man squad. Guarantee that. We've been recording all day. We've had a great time at the Mall House in Wakefield. This time next week, on the last word, we'll be reflecting on West Ham versus Newcastle, the opening game of the Premier League 2020-2021. Join us for all our reaction bids on Newcastle Fans TV, and we'll see you next week.